What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel and another episode of Weekend Watch where I break down the top five movies at the weekend box office and I also let you know what is coming to streaming services. It took a couple of months but we finally have the first box office success of 2024 and its name is Dune Part 2. Now this is absolutely no surprise at all whatsoever because the second installment of Dune was highly anticipated. There's been a lot of positive feedback and reviews about this second film. Anyone that's seen it early has had nothing but fantastic things to say about this movie. The word of mouth is spreading. And what really benefits Dune Part 2 is that this movie is definitely going to be so rewatchable. People are going to love it. They're going to want to go back to the theater and see it second, third, fourth time, fifth time. 10 times, however many times you want to go and see Dune, people are going to go back again and again. So that is extremely positive because that is what's going to help Dune push itself to the potential billion dollar club. So what are the numbers for Dune part two for this past weekend? It's opening weekend. Well, just domestically, Dune part two brought in 81 and a half million dollars Internationally, it brought in 97 million, and the grand worldwide total right now is at 178 and a half million dollars. So, Dune Part Two definitely has a great start, and I feel like this film is going to dominate throughout the main part of March because we do have a couple of other blockbusters that are being released later on in the month. We have Ghostbusters Frozen Empire and also the new Godzilla Kong movie. So I'm not really sure how those films are going to affect Dune Part 2's performance later on going into April, but we will see. But as of right now, Dune Part 2 is king of the box office. So let's move on to the rest of the top five. In second and third place, second place goes to Bob Marley, One Love, dropped down one spot to second place with $7.4 million dollars. In third place is Ordinary Angels with $3.8 In fourth and fifth place, fourth place, Madam Web is still hanging, no pun intended, hanging in there at number four with $3.2 million. And rounding out the top five is The Chosen Season 4 with $3.1 million. So what is new at the box office this coming weekend to possibly, potentially, maybe, although I don't think so, but possibly give Dune Part 2 just a little bit of competition. Counter-programming, that's what we have. We have a horror film, and we also have animation for the children, and a couple of other more options as well. So the two main brand new movies, we have Imaginary, and also we have Kung Fu Panda 4. Now, Imaginary is great counter-programming to Dune Part 2, because this is a new horror film from Blumhouse, so if you're kind of more in the mood to see a horror movie and not Dune, possibly Dune is not your thing, it's not your cup of tea, then you can go and check out Imaginary. And then Kung Fu Panda 4, I believe this one is going to perform well because it's targeted towards children. They need a brand new animated title at the box office, so this is arriving at the perfect time. There's also a couple of more options as well. There's a true story called Cabrini. Now, I'm not sure this is going to be in a wide release. It's probably going to be more limited. So definitely check out your theater listings to see if it's even there. And also Labyrinth. Labyrinth with Labyrinth. Back from my day. Who doesn't love Labyrinth? Labyrinth with David Bowie is getting a re-release. So definitely check out your local theater to see if that movie is going to be available as well. And you may want to check that out in the theater for the first time ever. So that's pretty cool that Labyrinth is getting a re-release. I'm all about that. Now, what's the options on streaming? Because as I always say, there's always, always options on streaming for you. And this week is a huge week in particular for Max and also Hulu. But we're going to start off with Netflix, as we always do. So starting over on Netflix, we have Damsel, which is a brand new movie starring Millie Bobby Brown and also The Gentleman. Now, The Gentleman is a brand new series based off of the movie directed by Guy Ritchie. 
and Guy Ritchie directed this series as well. So if you enjoyed the movie, then you may want to check out the show. But Max, if you are not done with Timothy Chalamet, Max is for you this week. Because if you saw Dune Part 2 already, but you need more Chalamet in your life, Wonka. Wonka is debuting this week on Max on March 8th, which is Friday. Yes, yes, it's Friday. So if you have not seen Wonka yet, now is definitely your time to do so. Moving over to Hulu, Hulu is the other huge brand new release of the week, Poor Things. Poor Things with Emma Stone is dropping on Hulu March 7th. And this is perfect timing because the Academy Awards are next Sunday, March 10th. And Poor Things is nominated for several Oscars, including Best Picture. So if you have not seen the movie yet, now's the perfect time for you to do so, to check that out before the awards. But if you're not interested in Poor Things, Hulu is offering as well The Marsh King's Daughter. Disney Plus is going to have Queens. I believe this is a one-time special narrated by Angela Bassett. I mean, who doesn't love Angela Bassett? <laughs> I'm there. So if you're interested in that, that will be dropping probably on Wednesday. Disney Plus usually drops new items on Wednesday. So check out Queens. All right, this next one is kind of killing me because it's Amazon Prime. And the first item I'm going to mention stars Zac Efron. Now, as we all know, Zac Efron was just so brilliant in the Iron Claw. We're talking award potential material. Even though he was not nominated, such a crime. He was robbed of a nomination in every single award show. But it just kills me that Zac Efron just does the Iron Claw and his next project is called Ricky Stanicki. I mean, check out this poster. It's absolutely ridiculous. What is this movie? Like, what is this? This is the problem with Zac Efron's career. He goes from amazing material to something like this. It's extremely disappointing. It's probably a crude, raunchy comedy. That's the vibe I'm getting. I mean, look at John Cena. This is ridiculous. So I'm probably going to check it out just to see what it's all about. But that's the problem with Zac Efron. If he wants to maintain a respected career, he can't be doing Ricky Stenicki like this. It just really, it makes me laugh. All right, let's just move on. But also, if you're not interested in Ricky Stenicki on Amazon Prime, you can catch Five Nights at Freddy's. If you missed it in theater, also on Peacock, maybe you don't have Peacock and you have Amazon Prime, now's your moment. So they're adding Five Nights at Freddy's. Paramount Plus is adding What Happens Later. I'm going to check this movie out. This is the romantic film with Meg Ryan and David Duchovny. Meg Ryan also directed this film. It didn't really perform well at the box office, but I didn't pick it up on physical because I wanted to stream the movie, so I'm happy it came to Paramount. I'm definitely going to check that out. So I will be streaming that on Paramount+. Plus. And the final item on streaming, brand new this week, over on Apple TV+, Plus, we have The Reluctant Traveler with Eugene Levy, Season 2. So that is everything happening at the box office and also on streaming. So comment down below and let me know how many times did you check out Dune Part 2 this past weekend? Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave, and I'll see you next time.